Good afternoon, everyone. I want to introduce you to the topic of my project, Surgical Insights on the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Management. My name is Mihaela Topala. I'm a gastroenterology resident from Romania. I work in uh, Bucharest. I I'm also a PhD student at Carol Davila University in Bucharest. And I'm uh, participating at a one-year translational medicine program with a scholarship provided by the MOL group. On this occasion, I want to thank them for this opportunity. My supervisor is Sabo Chabraham, and my scientific methodology supervisor is Annette Ranch. My vision is that in the next years, the morbidity in the inflammatory bowel patient will decrease, and they will have an improvement in the quality of life. And for that, my mission is to evaluate interventional endoscopic uh, procedures and new surgical techniques that might have a positive um, uh, improvement in the outcome of IBD patients. For my mission, I have um, two specific goals I'm uh, currently working on. The first one is a project about a uh, surgical technique that uh, is uh, used while performing intestinal resection in Crohn's disease. And the second one is about uh, endoscopic balloon dilation in Crohn's disease strictures. This is my uh, first project. It's titled Effectiveness of Extended Mesenteric Excision in Preventing Postoperative Crohn's Disease Recurrence. For this project, I used the methodology for systematic review and meta-analysis, and I started in, in September 2022. As we all know, Crohn's disease represents a chronic condition that is characterized by recurrent flares of uh, intestinal inflammation that can affect any part of the digestive tract. Its prevalence varies between 1.5 and 331 cases per 100,000 people in Europe, with higher rates being reported in Western and Nordic countries. Complications such as stenosis, fistulas, um, or abscess can be diagnosed um, at one third of the cases. And consequently, 70% of the patient will require the abdominal surgery during their entire lifetime. Postoperative recurrence rates are high, and up to 20% of the patients will require multiple intervention. Some studies reported that uh, the mesentery secretes a large amount of pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic cytokines that uh, might play a role in the pathogenesis and disease progression in Crohn's, and that it might even affect the postoperative recurrence rates. So in the last years, new surgical techniques have evolved, such as conoes anastomosis and extended mesenteric excision, but more data is needed to properly evaluate their impact on postoperative recurrence. So my aim for this project is to evaluate the effectiveness of extended mesenteric excision in preventing postoperative Crohn's disease recurrence. Uh, if you are asking what does extended mesenteric excision mean, I will start with explaining what uh, limited excision represents. As you can see in the first picture, it's performed when the mesentery is divided close to the intestinal wall. And in the extended excision, the mesentery is removed by dividing it close to the mesenteric root or close to the major arterial trunks. For this project, uh, my clinical question is uh, whether extended mesenteric excision is associated with a lower rate of postoperative recurrence and postoperative complication compared with limited excision. And uh, for that, I use the PICO fr framework. The population is represented by adults, Crohn's disease patients who undergo intestinal resection. The intervention is represented by performing extended mesenteric excision. As a comparator, we have limited mesenteric excision. And we have uh, two sets of outcomes. The primary outcome is disease recurrence represented by clinical endoscopic or surgical recurrence. And the secondary uh, outcomes are assessing the length of hospital stay or the postoperative mortality and morbidity. My hypothesis is that um, uh, the extended mesenteric excision is associated with a lower rate of postoperative complication and postoperative uh, recurrence. And if my hypothesis would be true, performing this type of intervention during intestinal resection would have a um, positive impact both on short-term and long-term outcomes in Crohn's disease patients. 
I did my systematic search on 9 November in five databases. I used uh, this uh, search key with three domains, the first one related to Crohn, the second one to mesentery, and the third one to resection. As you can see in the, my flowchart of the selec selection process, uh, we had almost 7,200 hits, and uh, we did a duplicate removal and the title abstract selection. We reported a K power of 0 0.85 at that stage, and we continued, and now we have um, four full eligible, uh, full text eligible uh, papers. And this is my uh, second topic, efficacy and safety of endoscopic balloon dilation for Crohn's disease strictures. I uh, started this project in December, and I uh, also used the uh, systematic review and meta-analysis methodology. As I already stated, the main concern in Crohn's disease is the high risk of complications. Intestinal strictures represent the most common complication, and studies have reported that after 20 years from the diagnosis, almost 60% of the patients will have at least one uh, stricture. Unfortunately, the efficacy of medical treatment is very limited, and um, we have to perform inter interventional uh, procedures. Uh, the surgery with bowel resection and structural plasty uh, has postoperative complications and um, high rate of disease recurrence, so the endoscopic treatments are uh, preferred, with the endoscopic balloon dilation being the mainstay of endoscopic therapy. And it was also... Um, recommended in the latest guideline published by ECHO in 2020. So for this project, my aim is to evaluate the efficacy and safety of endoscopic balloon dilation for Crohn's disease strictures. For this uh, project, my uh, uh, main clinical question is how effective is endoscopic balloon dilation in decreasing the need for surgery in Crohn's disease strictures? I use a COCO-POP uh, framework. My population is also represented by um, Crohn's disease adult patients with intestinal strictures. The um, context is represented by performing endoscopic balloon dilation, and the condition are represented by procedural complication, measuring the short-term efficacy and long-term efficacy. My hypothesis is that um, endoscopic balloon dilation has a low rate of complications and a high rate of clinical efficacy, and that would have a uh, positive impact on the long-term outcome. I did a primary preliminary search in December in five databases. We have almost uh, 13,000 hits, and this is uh, my search key with two domains. There are some uh, previous meta-analyses published, but there are also some new articles in the last years. So I think uh, we can have an update on this meta-analysis. In the summary, I uh, want to submit my first project by June 2023 and the second project by September 2023. Thank you for your attention. Uh, great presentation. Uh, my question is uh, for your second project. Uh, what was the conclusion of the previous meta-analysis and uh, do you think uh, that uh, will change uh, regarding your uh, study? Uh, they uh, reported a low rate of complication up to 5%. And um, they also reported that the clinical efficacy and the technical success are, have uh, higher rates. Congratulations for excellent presentation. I have uh, two questions regarding the first topic. First one, if, uh, first one is if you are taking into account the location of the strictures or resection. Uh, uh, and second one is also about the first topic. And can you clarify it exactly how we, how we are defining the extended, extended resection, mesenteric resection? Uh, so for the uh, first question, um, we are expecting to find about 60 or 17, uh, 70 uh, studies. And we plan to have a subgroup analysis depending on the location of the stenosis. And also, if it's possible, we plan to have uh, anastomotic versus non-anastomotic uh, comparison. And uh, about the second uh, question, um, 
the extended mesenteric means that the whole affected mesentery is uh, excised, is resected, and they start the resection close to the mesenteric root or close to the major arterial trunks. It's, um, it's a similar procedure as in a cancer operation. Maybe one more brief question. Uh, do you plan to include the native strictures or the post-operative strictures for the second study? Um, I First of all, I want to include them all and uh, to see later if we can have a subgroup analysis to lower the rate of the heterogeneity.